Hey, good morning. It's Michael with Songbird and the Orchid over in Old Colorado City. We specialize in backyard birding, Hawaiian-grown island orchids, and nature-themed gifts. Uh, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about flickers and woodpeckers, drumming, mating behaviors, and nest boxes. It's springtime. It's mid-March. Right about Valentine's Day, ironically, you start hearing a lot of the, uh, the drumming and pounding on people's houses and I get a lot of phone calls and a lot of questions about what's going on. So I'd like to give you a couple of tips on the behavior of uh, flickers. Primarily, I want to talk about the red shafted flicker. This is our most common flicker. He is a woodpecker, obviously. If you look at the breast, he's got a kind of a creamy breast, black crescent, a uh, little uh, red there. These guys actually spend most of their time on the ground in your yards. They're specialty ant eaters. They have uh, antacid, and that's actually where the word comes from, that helps digest the highly acidic ants. And they've got really sticky tongues. So they'll be bouncing in your yard eating all the ants in your patio, and you will see them uh, out there quite a bit over the summer. But come here in the spring, we get a lot of phone calls of, this woodpecker's damaging my house. So the first question we always ask, what does it sound like? Is it or is it a whap, whap, whap? And there's a significant difference between the two. The first is called drumming. It's a really fast, high pitch frequency. What the woodpeckers are doing, they aren't in the true songbird family. They've kind of evolved in their, their, in their own little way. So they don't have the developed vocal cords to sing to established uh, territories and to attract mates. So what they use is this high pitched drumming in order to do exactly that. Say, hey guys, this is my territory and I'd like the mate to come in. And uh, that's the purpose of drumming. They are not damaging your house. What they might be damaging is your early morning sleep because why drum on a telephone pole on the, or on the side of a house when they can find a metal chimney cap or a vent cap that reverberates and amplifies their call for territory tenfold? And that's usually what they find is a piece of metal flashing of some variety on your roof and that can be decimating to people's early morning sleep. So this also is a big challenge. Usually we get calls from people that absolutely love birds. They want some advice on how to attract birds better or, or pros and cons on different feeders. This time of year, we get people calls from people that hate birds and want to shoot that uh, woodpecker off their house. Here's the hard part on that. A, all native uh, birds are highly protected under the International Migratory Bird Treaty Act and poaching a wildlife I never take as, as a joke. Um, but the best way to try and uh, tell people how to address with these flickers is to hang a flicker box. They're very large size boxes because they're big birds, but here's the trick. If you can get a flicker to move into this box, it will establish this is his territory if they have a successful nesting brood, they might return year after year after year, and the baby sometimes will continue to return back to their nest box. So they're about 70 bucks. They aren't super cheap, but it's a lot cheaper than actually uh, uh, replacing siding if they are trying to nest in your house. If they're just drumming, the first part, that is a, that's kind of the trick. There's not a lot of way to protect your metal flashing from the drumming, but if they're actually going whap, whap, whap and excavating a larger two and a half, three inch size hole in your siding, the only solution is really to hang a box. The other question I get is, well, can I put this box over on a tree instead of on the side of my house? And the answer to that is no. The birds, when they're starting to figure out where they're going to excavate their next cavity, they're looking at all sorts of things that we aren't seeing. They're looking at the, the height of where the hole is, that angle and aspect to where the sun hits in terms of, of the direction. Typically, they are nesting anywhere from 15 to 30 feet, 18 to 25 is kind of their golden window, above ground on a south, southeast facing exposure and it's a little more open out there. That is their prime thing and house peaks kind of fill that niche. 
The other reason why they're doing that is because we have a tendency of any dead tree throughout town, as soon as the tree dies, we remove that snag. We're reducing their ability to find adequate um, trees to excavate into. So our houses have become the place of those trees. So to me, the best way to help address woodpeckers in the spring uh, excavating and damaging people houses is to live with wildlife it's truly the only way if you go up and patch that hole they've already decided that's where they want to nest they'll, they'll excavate a hole here they'll move over here they'll move over here you'll just chase that bird around on your house spending lots of money on, with a contractor trying to redo the siding so you're better off just spending a house living with wildlife letting them move in and letting them defend your house and your yard against all the other woodpeckers. So that's why they are drumming and that is why they start excavating in people's nests, uh, houses to build their nests and that's really the only solution to do this. I, I'm trying to find another innovative solution for the, the drumming on metal uh, caps, you know, short of some kind of chain link up there that, it, that gets pretty complicated. Luckily it only ha lasts for Oh, three, four, five weeks, which is a lot of sleep dis disturbance. But, you know, it is part of the beauty of living with wildlife uh, here in, in Colorado Springs. One of the other woodpeckers you will be hearing out there drumming around is the downy woodpecker. We do have other woodpeckers here, but this is your other one that you may be uh, seeing in mating behavior right now and drumming, and they do the same almost behavior these guys are less likely to excavate in your house. They're also less likely to use a house box. The flickers are, are really uh, keen to take a man-made uh, nest box. So if you have any questions on the flickers or anything, other behaviors you're seeing on any of the birds in your yard, give us a call over here in Old Colorado City at Songbird in the Orchid. Thank you.